Hello everybody, welcome to Jill's Yoga, January, quite a dreary time and you know tomorrow January the 18th is called Blue Monday, it's supposed to be the most depressing day of the year. So I thought we'd do a practice today thinking about inviting some energy into our body some heart opening, um, back bending postures, shoulder opening. I think as soon as we have a better posture, we stand up straight, we open our shoulders, we breathe more effectively, that can help us to feel happy almost instantly. Today the posture, the practice is called Happy Hearts. Happy Hearts on a Blue Monday, but of course it doesn't have to be Monday. <laughs> I'm going to start with back bending, gently back bending towards our peak posture, which is dancer posture today. I'll give you lots of variations. Please go very gently and look after your lower back. I'm going to start with laying down now. Opening up the chest, the heart centre, the shoulders. I have a bolster here, but you don't have to have a bolster. You can have a big cushion behind you. You can have a, a block underneath you. I'll show you various options. With my bolster, I'm going to take my brick. You can use a, a large book. I'm going to place my brick. I don't like this so you can see it. Underneath. So look, Sort of raises the bolster up. I'm keeping the brick on its lowest level. I find that best for me because my bolster is quite hard. I could do with a softer one, really. So you'd have your bolster like that. Basically, if you get comfortable, you can lay back against it. And you might take the soles of the feet together, or bend the knees, or stretch the legs out. If you don't have a bolster, you might have a cushion, or a yoga block, get under your back. To use a cushion if you haven't got a yoga block. I've just got this between my shoulders. Good place where I open the heart centre. I'm not with a cushion or something to put behind my head. You know, however you are, as long as you're comfortable and you've got this lovely lift in the chest. You don't really have to learn anything. As Locks the shoulders about, the chest is lifted, we've got a bit of elevation there. Get yourself cosy. Put a blanket over if you're cold, make sure you're warm enough. We're here for about five minutes. And tune into your breath. Take time to settle and tune into your breath. Make you feel the breath in the body. How does the breath move the body? The breath might be a bit rapid or shallow to start with, but as we progress, it will get slower and easier, more gentle. Try not to control the breath. So I'm on my bolster here like this. I've got much room to straighten my legs. You have to do what you can, don't you? <laughs> And when you're comfy and you're breathing naturally and calmly, take your time to settle. I'm going to sit up so I can talk to you. I feel the breath in the space of the heart. The breath in the space of the heart. Breathing in. The breath parting the heart centre. 
Breathing out, relaxing back to center. In breath, the out breath. The pauses between the breath. The pause at the top of the breath. And the still point at the bottom. Simply being with this basic body rhythm, the breath and the heart centre. The in-breath, the pause, the out-breath, the still point. And in that still point is space. Space to allow you to breathe more easily, both physically and mentally. To allow you to let go, to soften. Breathing in. And breathing out completely, letting go. I breathe in, I breathe out, I breathe away any restrictions or pressures I've placed upon myself. I breathe in, I breathe out, any restrictions or pressures I've placed upon myself. How are you feeling today? How is your body feel? How does it feel in your heart? What's your heart song? Softening, letting go of anything you don't need.
following the breath and being supported by the earth and knowing it's a great foundation for your practice. Gradually start to deepen the breath. Take a few deeper breaths into the space of the heart. The in breath part in the heart center. The out breath drawing back to center. With each breath, feeling energy spreading throughout your whole body to recharge you, revitalize you, help you through your practice today. Very gradually, lift yourself up and slide your prop, your bolster or your block or brick away from you to one side. Start to get some movement in the body, wiggle fingers and toes, stretch legs and arms. Maybe take a nice long full body stretch from fingertips to toes. Stretch back through your fingers, spread them apart, lift your toes up towards you. Just feel like this airflow between your toes and your fingers. Lengthening up the waist, the shoulders are soft. Rooting down through the balls of the feet, the heels. And then draw the knees in and do some little circles here. You can hold the knees, you can hold behind the knees. To massage the back, to repair the back for our practice. And go the other way, draw the knees in more, take them further away, as you make the circles bigger, you might feel a bit of movement in the mid back, between the shoulders, even into the back of the head, take your feet on the mat, either come up to your side to come up to seated or do some spinal rolls here. Keep the chin tucked in. You can cross the ankles and hold the big toes if it's right for you. coming up and we're coming straight onto hands and knees today. Just check you've got padding if you need it for the back of the knee, you might need your, um, you might need a block or a brick near you, have stuff around you. Come onto hands and knees, nice tabletop back, knees a little bit apart here. And we're breathing and we lift the knee and we look up into tiger. Breathe that forehead to me and squeeze the tummy in. Use the breath. We'll do this one and one more. Keep the hips squared off. Lift a bit higher. Draw the knee in. 
What is the forehead? And help that foot through between the hands. Tuck the back toes under and take a nice deep lunge here. Put your hands on your side. Firm up your tummy. Put your hands to your lower back and your thumbs trace your spine. Lengthen your lower back, lengthen your lumbar spine. Little lift in the pubic bone. Lift your heart centre but draw the ribs down. So we're coming into our little back bend here. Crescent moon back bend. Got a nice smile, a nice curve between your shoulders. The supports around the spine with your thumbs and maybe push down a bit to lengthen your lumbar. Tummy firm. Then we're going to lengthen. We'll take three breaths. Don't bring the ribs up with you. And one more. Breathing in and out. Your prayer hands come to your crown, your brow, your throat, your heart. I do a big in-breath into breath of joy and a big smile. Give yourself a hug with your right arm on top, round the back. Breath of joy. Left arm on top. Big hug. Breathing in. Breath of joy. Give yourself a big hug. Take a few breaths and hold it there. Hold the hug. Come up like this and you can stay like that or you could eagle your arms. Don't have to meet, you can do that. Lift the elbows away, lift the forearms away. Breathe into the space of the heart at the back. Lovely stretch between the shoulders here. Maybe even lift the elbows up towards the chin. And you can look up if you like. You could circle if you like. You might want to get into anywhere that's a bit tight, a bit stuck today, a bit icky. If it's hard on the old balance, take your foot out a little bit, your front foot out a bit, or you can even walk your back foot towards the um, right side of the mat. Well done. Inhaling up. Bring your hands to a prayer, to the crown, the brow, the throat, the heart again. Breath of joy. Turn your palms to face the back, roll the shoulder blades together, interlink the fingers. Reach to the earth and then lift the arms away from you. Imagine there's a pencil between your shoulder blades and you've got to hold on to it. Draw the shoulders down the back, keep the tummy firm and maybe take a little bit more back bend. But if you're looking up, feel the neck lengthening from that place between the shoulders. Breathe well. Well done. So we're coming into gate, we're going to side bend. Your left knee is going to turn to face the long edge of the mat. So you might need to help yourself straighten the right leg. You might need to take your brick beside your left knee or not. Have it there, it can, you can put it back in case you need it. Either have your right toes facing forward or slightly at an angle. Right hand on the right leg. We'll open up to the left, make some space and might be enough or you might come over a bit more and you keep the hips squared off don't compromise your posture breathe well you want to take the hand down if, if you've got a stronger practice so you might want to put it on a block that's an idea Making space between the ribs. Seeing if we can take a more effective breath here. Really lengthening out the waist. Allow yourself to soften. 
all through the practice, keep coming back to how do I feel? How does my body feel? How does the breath feel? Big circle back. So you may want to put your hand on your support. I quite like that because I can push down into it. Reach up. That might be enough or if the shoulder's all right. Stretch, stretching through the right side. Make sure there's room between that top shoulder and the neck. You may stay there, you may have a rest, you might reach up and you can reach up that right leg and then come into what I call tiny dancer if you like. A little prep for dancer. So push your foot into the back of it, <laughs> push your foot into your hand, into the palm. Lift your heart. And you're working and this is only a direction working your foot towards the top of your head but it's only a direction so we're going to come into a wild thing and then we'll be turning around so follow carefully you don't have to do this one if it's too strong Take your foot down, your right foot down, and I'm going to turn my left foot towards my left wrist and open up to your wild thing. So just to suit you, there's, there's many sorts of wild things. I like to have my hands on the block, it helps me. And then that top arm, the right arm circles all the way down. I'm going to be facing the other side of the mat. So you're facing the back of the mat. If you can't see me, listen. It's exactly like we did before. You're in tabletop here. And we're doing the other side. So we're going to lift up your right leg and look up. No, this is the left leg, isn't it? We did the right leg last time, the left leg. Lift the left leg up and look up. And hair. Three tigers. Now you want to give your knee kiss. One and lift. Two. And this time help it through. Okay. Maybe tuck the back toes under, get a deeper lunge. If you're wobbly, just remember to turn that right foot out to the left side of the mat. You can even walk the left foot out a little bit. As long as the knee is not pronating, going inwards, you can even turn it out. Firm up the tummy, draw the ribs down, shoulders down, and then support your back as we work gently into our back bending. Tail lengthens, ribs draw down. Maybe push down with the thumbs to lengthen the low back. So we're distributing our back bend evenly. Lengthen out the waist and find your crescent moon, your crescent shape. Breathe well. Two more breaths. Hands come to a prayer. The crown, the brow, the throat, the heart. Breathing in a big breath of joy, a big smile on your lips and between your shoulders. As you exhale, it's left over right and give yourself a hug. Inhale, breath of joy. Right over left. Gather in. And one more. Hold the hug. And as you slowly come up, still keeping that hug with you, you may want to stay there or you might want to eagle your arms, Garuda Mudra. Take the elbows away, lift them even higher. And 
nice breath into the space of the heart at the back and I'm doing exactly what I told you not to do. Check you're not doing it as well, my foot's coming in, turn it out a little bit. <laughs> Check you've got balance, it's so easy to forget isn't it, you can circle, you can do whatever feels good. Exploring, where are you holding, where are you feeling tight? Yeah, it can be tricky on the balance, can't it? Breathe in, a few more breaths, you can look up if you like, you can open up your back then. Keep taking the elbows away, stretching between the shoulders. And then we'll inhale, we'll reach up, grow hands, crown, brow, throat, heart. Open your wings, draw the shoulder blades together. Try to take the um, interlink that you didn't take before. Don't worry if you don't take it. Reach down behind you. Lift your heart. Distribute your back bend evenly and reach away. Squeeze that pencil between your shoulders. Three more breaths into the space of the heart. If you know you enjoy that breath where the throat's slightly constricted, do that. That subtle throaty breath, like the ocean or snoring. Release that. Roll the shoulders a bit. How are they feeling? <laughs> So we're going to turn, take your hand out to help you. Your right knee's coming around to the front, straighten the left leg. See how it's a job if there's not much room. You might need your brick here. <laughs> take your left hand down your left leg, open to the right. Side bend. So soften, use your breath, gravity and the weight of your body to gently ease you out. Some of you might get your hand down. It might be different this side, so keep the hips squared off. You can even curl the toes up and hold your big toe. I didn't say that last time. Do what makes you feel good. Nice big circle. Take your hand down to your block or not if you're not using one. Reach up, keep the hips squared off. Take the arm then off. So if you haven't got much room because there's lots of furniture, that's fine. You can look up, you can start to spin your ribs, your chest towards your left, towards the sky or look ahead. So take a rest, we'll try a little balance here, lift the leg up, bend the knee, we'll take our, our tiny dancer. Working the toes towards the back of the head. That's lovely. Stretch out that left leg. You're going to just turn your right heel, your right foot towards your right hand as we turn towards the back of the mat and you open up into your wild thing, your baby wild thing. Big circle all the way around. <laughs> We're getting there. <laughs> Circle the hips a bit. Feel that. How are your hips feeling? Feel that we can get into anywhere that's a bit tighter, into what I call the nitty gritty. 
and the other way. I'm starting to unwind your spine. Maybe your brain needs a bit of unwinding. Shut the eyes. Well done. Take a big stretch back and relax for a moment. Allow yourself to soften. Feel the space you've made through the sides of the body. I quite like to take my knees apart and relax my upper body between my legs. I even make a little pillow of my hands and press it in. Breathe in between the shoulders. Breathe out, soften the low back. Letting go. Finding some stillness. And the stillness there. And this is a little reading from the Chandogya Upanishad. There's a light that shines beyond all things on earth, beyond us all, beyond the heavens, beyond the highest heavens. And this is the light that shines in our hearts. And come up slowly. Let's take a first down dog. Put the toes under, lift the knees. You might want to slowly walk the dog, you might want to rise up and down, you might want to have a wiggle. You carry on, I'm just going to take my jumper off, it's getting a bit warm now, isn't it? <laughs> Keep the neck long, breathe well. Make sure you've got that good foundation, pushing down through the balls of the feet, pushing down through the palms. Making sure there's not any crease in your wrists. Two more breaths. Breathing in slowly. Breathing out slowly. Breathing in soft and deep. Breathing out softly. Well done. Bring your knees down. So you can either come down knees, chest, chin, or you might just come down on belly, others come down onto your belly. Some of you do knees, chest, chin, and we come down. Keep the elbows down for sphinx, or we do some little dynamic cobras. Hands, I'd like to take my hands quite far in front of my shoulders. You can keep the elbows soft and into the ribs. Breathing in, don't come up too high. Exhale down. You know, you can if you've got a stronger practice. Keep a nice length through the tail, through the low back. Neck in line with the spine. Look ahead. Push down with the thighs. Then let your cobra's tail. Push down with the front of the feet. Just two more. Draw the chest through between the gateway of the shoulders. And then the last one, we'll hold for five breaths. So stay low if you want to, stay with sphinx if you want to, or... Breathe in, draw the chest through, breathe out, lengthen the spine. And one more breath. Breathing in slowly. Breathing out slowly. Come down nice and slow. Make pillow of your hands. Windshield wipe your legs from side to side and take time to relax. Let go. How does your back feel? 
How do you feel? Well done. Come onto your hands and knees. We're going to come to standing through down dog. Tuck the toes under, lift the knees. So your second down dog. You might still want to rise up and down or take a walk. You might rest in the heels one way and the other way. Or you just might want to stay here and marinate for five breaths. Keep the knees soft. Draw up through the thighs. You've got a stronger practice, draw up Mulabanda. Little lift down below. And we slowly walk our hands back to our feet. Maybe this time, monkey, walk your hands back to your feet. The full bend. Coming up, resetting the spine to standing. And come and stand in the centre of your mat, facing the long edge of your mat. Take your feet apart and turn the toes out. Maybe come into goddess. Knees, just check your knees at over your ankles and you're not sort of coming in with the knees, the inner thighs. Take your hands to your heart for the goddess pose and sink down a little bit deeper here. Breathe well. Once again, being aware of the breath in the heart center. Connecting to this energy. We'll move, we'll breathe and we'll draw the energy up. And exhale, let it wash all the way through you. Breathing and drawing the energy up. Letting it wash through you. One more. to your hands. And a big inhale up one more time. Browns, crown, brow, throat, heart, take a seat. Breathe in breath of joy. Take your left arm and wrap it round the back. Look at your left foot and turn it in. Right foot towards the front for a bound Virabhadrasana 2, a bound Warrior 2. So even you're in the bound one, you know, resist the urge to come forward, the shoulders are over the hips. Palm comes up, reverse your warrior. So you can just be like this, or you can take more of a back bend, a reverse bound warrior here. If you want to take your hand and just push down there, you know, make a little bit more space, that's fine. Straighten the front leg and make even more space through the front of the body because you probably guess where we're coming to. And reach. Trikonasana, triangle. Where are you going to take that hand? You, Whatever's best for you. Don't take it down too far if it's not right. But roll that left shoulder back. Tuck your tail under. And that might be enough. And then some of you will lift the arm up if it's right for you. You don't even have to look up. With a stronger practice, you can hook the big toe. So go back to that breath again, breathing in energy and 
Breathing out, spreading all that energy all the way through you. Nice deep breaths to revitalize you and recharge you. Such a wonderful energizing posture, Trikonasana. Really good for stimulating the um, liver and gallbladder meridian lines, the sides of the body. Let's do some big circles, knees out like so. One, two, just comb in there with your fingers. I'm going to come up. Of breaths, two or three breaths in warrior two. Stretch your arms from the center. Look at those strong arm bones. Push down with your hands. Then palms come up. Take our hands to our hearts. We'll turn back into the goddess and sink a little bit deeper there. Big inhaling up. Prayer hands, crown, brow, throat, hearts. Breath of joy. Um, put the right arm round. Turn the right toes in, left toes out. And we're in a bound warrior two. Five breaths. Remember Ujjayi breath if you know it. That subtle throaty breath, sometimes called the warming breath. When we focus on the breath, that can really help to keep to con help us to concentrate on our practice keep going back to the breath keep checking in how you are with the palm up we'll reverse the word that might be enough or come back even further and you might i quite like to look down but let's not straighten that front leg for a little bit let's just keep the knee over the ankle and check that knee you know doesn't pronate it stays in line with the ankle. Tuck your tail under. Straighten the front leg and reach. Toward the side of the wall. So we've got lovely length from the right hip to the left fingers. Keep that length. Keep the length through the underside of the body. You can make this in a little twist as well. Keep the knees soft if you need to. Drop through the thigh. And if you want to come into the full posture. Breathe well. Always bend the front knee a bit if you need to. Please watch your back in this. It can be quite strong on the back. One more breath. Breathing in slowly, breathing out slowly. Some nice big circles here. Opening up that shoulder. Coming all the way up to warrior two. Push down through strong feet. Palm comes up, both palms come up, hands to the heart, come to the center, bend the knees, sink a little bit lower, inhaling up to the sky, prayer hands, crown, brow, throat, hearts. Take a seat, inhale, breath of joy, hands to your hips, turn the toes to face the front of the mat, come to a nice flat back, hands in hip creases, nice tabletop back here, and just where you want your legs, keep the knees soft, you can bend the knees, and we'll fold, we'll do a little rag doll, we'll fold the arms, let go after all that strong stuff, as much knee bend as you need, and feel your spine is just Hanging there from your pelvis, stress free, no effort. Next long relax.
let go. Allow yourself to soften. I'm going to come into one that I call giraffe now. As much softness in the knees as you like. It's like a sort of wide-legged down dog, really. It's basically giraffe drinking at the water. So this is your giraffe's neck. Walking out to the water hole. Give me a hand there. So the giraffe has to take his feet quite wide apart so he can, he can feed at the water. He can drink the water. He can get his mouth all the way down to the water. He's a long neck stretching. Push down with your hands. Lift your tailbone a bit higher. Drop your chest. Oh, I do like giraffe. I haven't done it for such a long time. I've forgotten about it. Walk your hands in. I'm going to turn now. I'm coming to the mat. So I'm going to look at that right foot. So this is just simply to come to the mat, really. Turn your right toes towards the front, your left toes towards the front, take the left knee down. So I've just come down to my mat, into kneeling. Okay. Take a little moment to curl up into a little ball and rest again. Allow yourself to soften. And breathe in between your shoulders. Breathe out, let go. Nice, easy breaths here. Relax. Slowly, I'm going to come onto hands and knees again. So, if we did that knees, chest, chin before, you can do it now, or you can just bend the elbows and come down. Otherwise, it's knees, chest, chin, lift your bum high and slide onto your belly. So, have a look and see what I'm doing here. I'm going to do some a posture to strengthen our, our back, really. I'm going to put my right hand on top of my left there, right hand on top of left, okay? Forehead. On my right hand and I'm going to lift my right hand on my head and lift my left leg so it's like that okay like that and down let's do five on that side breathing in and exhaling down and in out and watch your back if it's too much for you just do the upper body three Four, and one more, come down slowly, just take a moment to relax, let go, take a few breaths there and allow yourself to soften. So I've been reading some quotes from, from this rather lovely little book, I expect you've heard of it, it's, it's quite popular at the moment, it's called The Boy, The Mole, the Fox and the Horse by Charles Maxey. I think that's how you say it. I'm not sure. But I rather like this one. One of our greatest freedoms is how we react to things. One of our greatest freedoms is how we react to things. Let's do the other side. Do your left hands on top. Your forehead's on your left hand. We're gonna lift the left hand up, the upper body. Really lengthen through that right leg. Exhale down. And again. And down, stay strong. Three. And one more. Well done. A little wiggle, relax again. Maybe do your windshield wipers again. Letting go. Mm. 
Oh, there's another one that I, I quite liked. This is also from the um, same book. Isn't it odd? We can only see the outs. See, isn't it odd? We can only see our outside. But so much, nearly everything is happening on the inside. <laughs> isn't it odd? We can only see our outside, but nearly everything is happening on the inside. I think that's why I like yoga because it's such a holistic practice. And I hope you know, think about my, the inside of my body, do you? <laughs> Take your hands under your shoulders, stretch it back a moment, take a few breaths, lengthen through the back to counter pose. Maybe curl up into a little ball if you like. Counterpose in the back bend. We're going to take um, a gentle camel. You can take a stronger one if, if it's for you, but if you've got a brick or a cushion or something or a big book and you can put it between your thighs, I can really squeeze it, okay? Like it's hard to see it because it's black, the same as the leggings, but you're going to squeeze that and that's going to engage your muscles your adductor muscles between your thighs and your quads. You may want to sort of have a cushion or something with you. You might need it in a minute, but, or a block, but you may not. Thinking about backbending, we need to be so careful because we don't really have a backbend, do we? Just forward bend. <laughs> I want you to really engage your side muscles. That's terribly important. And you're not going to come back like that. You're pushing them forward. You're keeping your tummy firm. You're lengthening your tail. You're drawing the ribs down and broadening the collarbone area as you lift the chest. Do what we did before in our little kneeling one. Push down through your back then. Push down. And your thumbs just trace your spine. You've got that support. You want to lengthen your tail. Lift your pubic bone. Roll the shoulders back and down. And this might be quite enough for you. Some of you might lift your chest more and take your back bend deeper. And you might even look up. But... You want to lengthen the neck from that space between the shoulders and lift the eyes. If you want a gentle istrasana, the camel, breathe well. Keep your tummy beautifully firm to pro pro protect that low back and keep lengthening the low back. You want to distribute your back bend evenly. And if there's any pain or discomfort in the low back, don't do it. Come out of that slowly. Just rest and have a look. I find, you know, we won't do this now, but you can practice in your own time. I haven't got a wall very close, I'd use a bookcase. Can you see? If I push my thighs against the wall of the bookcase, and I'm doing this, I can't cheat. I'm pushing my thighs against, you see, and, and I can't come backwards. Brilliant. Let's take a few cat cows here and ease it out. <coughs> you might even shut your eyes. It's a feeling. What's going on in the inside of our bodies? I always think it's so funny that we can't can't see inside, can we? Can't see that. So you might want to rest, you might want to rest in child or do some more cat cows or we might come again. We might go a bit stronger this time, you can tuck your toes under, really engage those muscles. And let the, so come into it carefully, push the thighs forward, lengthen the tailbone, firm the tummy up and push down all the shoulders together. And that might be enough. Some of you might be able to get the heels. You know, and if you can do a stronger practice where you take the tops of the foot down and you know you're okay with this and you're well practiced and your back's all right, just do it. Well, that might be strong enough for lots of people. If you can't reach your heels, you might um, have a cushion or a block there or, or a few blocks.
Very well done. Yes. <laughs> Let's just do a few. You can either hold a scary cut like that. That's a lovely counter posture to come, isn't it? Tuck the chin in, tuck the tail under, breathe into the space that you've made between the shoulders. Very well, you can move with a breath. Extending the spine as you look up, flexing it as you round the back. Done. Draw our hands and knees again. I'm going to come down to our tummy for one more last one before we come and do our dancer posture, our peak posture. Let's maybe do knees, chest, chin, or come down, knees, chest, chin, and slide down. Now have a look at this one. You might need a, a pillow cushion with you. I'm going to take, we we'll have room, I hope you can see me. <laughs> We haven't got a, a really good professional studio set up in these home videos. We have to do our best. Um, right, I'm just going to come down. I'll just lay this way so you can see me. <laughs> Put my feet on that mat. Can't figure. Right, I'm just going to come down. So your palm is down. Your palm is down. Let's bend my knees. Don't bend your knees. Have your legs straight. Your palm is down like that, okay? I'll lay up this way. We'll get it right. <laughs> that's that's what I want. I keep looking at my TV screen when I'm making this just to see what you can see. Okay. There you are. Palm down. And you're going to bend your knees and you're going to turn like that. And you may very well need, you may need your cushion. You might need your cushion under your head. And if you can't see me, listen, bend your knees. And that might be enough. Well, you might be able to bend that top knee, which is your left knee, and take your foot and take a quad stretch. And that might be enough. If you've got a stronger practice, you straighten the underneath leg. And if it's too much for that shoulder, if it's too much for that shoulder, please, please just take the arm up by the ear. Support your head like that. That's perfectly okay too. Stay there with the breath. Stay there with the breath. And then some of you might open up into more of a reclining bow. So push your foot into your hand and open up your back then. Squeeze the shoulder blades together. So you're, you're sort of like you are in standing dance, but you're laying. Breathe well for five. Let's feel the curve of the spine behind the heart centre. Firm your tummy up. Please watch your low back. Keep pushing the foot into the hand. One more breath. Breathing in and breathing out. Just take a moment to roll onto your tummy. Do what you need to have a rest. You might windshield wipe your legs. You might have a wiggle. Take a moment to relax and rest and soften. Let go. And then we're ready to do the other side. So your left arm is going to reach out. Your left arm reaches out. Bend the knees. That might be quite enough. You want a gentler day and just want to stretch your shoulder out. You might need something under your head. And you can take your top leg and take a quadricep stretch. Just draw your knee towards the far away corner of the mat. All right, straighten the underneath leg as well. See if you can touch your bum with your heel. And then you might push the foot into the hand and now you open up. Reclining bow. So 
but reclining down your ass with a bow. And of course, if that shoulder doesn't like it, I just can make a little pillow like that. That might be nice. Getting that balance, isn't it? <laughs> Climb up your tummy, stay strong. You might imagine you're standing up, you push down with that, with that foot. Come on, more breath, breathing in and out. Well done, really good. Pull it up. Let's take a nice stretch back into child. Stretch the arms in front of you, but I think it's nice to curl up into a little dormouse, a little ball here. Breathe into your back. Breathe in between the shoulders, breathe out, lengthen the low back, allow yourself to soften. Breathe in between the shoulders, breathe out, lengthen the low back, creating space. Well done. Let's come up through our down dog. I think it's our last down dog. <laughs> that might be a good thing for you or, or not. Tuck your toes under. Make it a lovely restorative one. Breathe well. If you've got a stronger practice, drop Malabanda, the pelvic floor. Draw your ribs, your chest towards your thighs. Keep your neck long. You might want to shake your head. Nod your, or nod your head. Lift up under the armpits, but keep the knees strong. Well done. Let's walk our hands to our feet again. And slowly, slowly come up. So, dancer, oh, you can have a strap with you. It's always good to have all this stuff with you. Let's try it against a wall first, if you've got a, a free wall. Before you do it, maybe have a look at your strap. So I've got a, a yoga strap here, which is, is better really. I've got a, a loop in the end. If you've got a yoga strap, you might do that. But don't worry if you haven't, you can just sort of take the strap like that and double it. Have it near you. It doesn't really matter which leg you start with. One hand holds the wall but make sure it's far, in, far enough away so you can come forward. Hips are squared off. Take one leg back and point the foot, square the hips off. Maybe walk the other hand a little bit further up the wall. I'll keep that standing there for me soft. And then just like we were doing laying down, Heel to bum and stretch out the quadricep, draw the knee away. And that might be quite enough for you. Or you might push the foot into the hand and then we can open up like we did before. I'm taking my hand a bit further up the wall so I can look up. Remember it's a back bend, not a forward bend. The hips are squared off, the shoulders are as squared off as they can be. Breathe well. So I keep pushing my foot into my hand and working eventually so my thigh's vertical, so of the foot faces the ceiling. Sorry, yeah, that's it. No, no, my shin's vertical. <laughs> I'm working my thigh to be horizontal. <laughs> Feel the curve of the spine behind the heart centre. So really, this is a standing bow, not a dancer. The dance is a really tough one where you take your hands back and fold your foot. Have a little rest. So how did that feel? Let's try the other side to give that leg a little bit of a rest. Take the toes back, heel to bum. That might be enough or we can push away. We could open up our back leg. Shoulders spread off, hips spread off, push the foot into the hand, keep the knees soft. 
You could do various things here. You could have a rest if that's enough for you. Otherwise, you could try to open up a little bit with the straps. So I'm going to put that strap on my foot. I'll try it with the other foot to give the that leg a rest. Can I get that lift there? Just check your hips are still snug on. You're not crunching too much in the lower back. You've got that space. Don't do it if it's too much. I like to look up, but I like to lengthen the back of the neck. In, I find if I look down, I'm coming to a forward bend. So if I look up, I encourage that back bend. And have a go with the other side if that felt all right for you. It's fairly strong, isn't it? But it's a really good stretch. It's a lovely heart opening posture, nice and strengthening and for your legs as well. Not quite that. Hips squared off, or your shoulders squared off, is, is your chest lifted? Take a little break, have a little walk on the spot. How do your legs feel? <laughs> Balances are strong on the legs, aren't they? Let's hinge forward a moment and just hang there. Ragdoll. Bend your knees, maybe rest your ribs on the shelf of your thighs. Softly. So you might just, you might want to come up or you might want to come down and go into child and rest. Some of you might, I'll offer you one that's not against the wall. If you want to try that, you might want to try it with your strap on that. You might want to stand off your mat. Sometimes that's better on the balance. I think I'll stand off my mat. Take one leg back. Doesn't matter. No, let's take your let's take your right leg back. Then I can. Otherwise, I'll get muddled up with the sides. Lengthen through the left side, and you can make a mudra with your index finger and thumb. Can you see me? All right. I've got to stand back a bit. Stand like this. So you've got that nice leg through the left side. Hips are squared off. So I'm just going to bend the knee and take my heel to my thigh. That might be enough. Like you did before, quad stretch. Keep the standing legs soft. And if you, you come forward slightly, you roll the shoulders back and keep that length all the way through the left side. Push the right foot into the hand. Five breaths. One, two, three. Four, five. So just sort of a gentle standing bow, really, not a dancer. <laughs> Nata Rajasna, the dancer. Let's do the other side. Hips squared off, keep the knees soft and reach out. Quad stretch. So my gaze is at something, I'm, I'm looking at the wall actually. They do say look up at that hand, but that's quite dodgy, isn't it? <laughs> Have one more breath, breathing in and out. 
Well done. Oh, I can feel it in my legs now. Let's take a forward bend. Fold the arms. Feel the spine hanging from the pelvis. Bend the knees. Rest your ribs on the shelf of your thighs, the length in your neck. And relax. Let gravity, the breath and the weight of your body ease you out. Gonna come down slowly to seated. Take a seat. Dandasana. Have a drink if you need one. I think I need a drink at moments. We've got nice straight spine, nice straight legs here. Take your hands to your hearts. We're going to breathe in and draw the energy out. Breathe out, let it wash all the way through you. Inhale, breath of joy. Exhale, hands back to your heart. Inhale. Exhale. Back to the heart. Inhale, breath of joy. And reach forward. Come up slowly, take your hands back to your heart, we'll do two more breath of joys, breathing in, breath of joy, exhale, reach, okay, one more, and then you're going to hold it here, you might need to bend the knees, I want you to Take your right hand to your left ankle or outer leg and left arm on top. Hinge from the hips, fold forward and relax. Take a few breaths to allow yourself to soften. Let go. It's really nice to relax after those strong back bends. So as much knee bend as you need in this forward bend. I'm going to read you a poem while you relax. It's called Time to be Slow. And it's by John O'Donoghue. This is the time to be slow. Lie low to the wall until the bitter weather passes. Try as best you can not to let the wire brush of doubt scrape from your heart all sense of yourself and your hesitant lights. If you remain generous, time will come good and you will find your feet again on fresh pastures of promise where the air will be kind and blushed with beginning. So very slowly, look at your hands and slide your left hand all the way up your outer left leg. Reach up through the right side and place the right fingertips behind you. I must take my glasses off because I can't see with them on, only for reading. <laughs> Breathe in tall, and as you breathe out, come around a little bit more. Think about your tummy, your ribs, your chest, your shoulder, all revolving in this gentle dandasana twist. The legs are nice and active, but the knees are soft. So put that twist from the base of the spine to the crown of the head. Imagine you've got a ball of lights, a ball of golden energy in the base of your spine. And breathing in, drawing that energy up and breathing out, letting it wash all the way through you. Breathing in all the way up the spine, right up to the crown of the head, pausing, 
breathing out, let that energy wash all the way through you. And a couple more. Really give the tummy an extra squeeze. Well done. Reach out with your left arm, your right arm, sorry, and curl it. Stop the chin and take a few slow breaths in the back of the heart. Well done. Come up nice and slowly from there and do the other side. Give your legs a little bit of a shout. Breathing in, drawing the energy up, exhaling, letting it wash all the way through you. Breath of joy, smile. Gather the hands to the heart, reverse the palms, push up to the sky. Come forward, stretch it out, have a wiggle, hands to the heart. Breath of joy and reach, exhale. Come a little bit further forward this time. Come back to the heart again. Breath of joy and reach. One more. This time it's the left arm underneath the right arm. So unfold in and relax. You can bend the knees as much as you like. You can rest your ribs, your chest and your side. Shut your eyes and soften. Let go. So difficult times never last forever. We need to remind ourselves that life is an experience of navigating through good and the not so good, the yin and the yang. As your jaw relaxed, do your eyes relaxed? Breathe in between the shoulders. Breathe out, let go through your low back, soften your neck. Now we're going to look at your hands, your right hand, slide it up the outer left leg. Reach up tall, place your fingertips behind you. Breathe well and your dander twist. One. So you can come around that wee bit further there. And one more breath. Breathing in all that sunshine energy all the way up your spine. And breathing out, letting it wash through you. Releasing anything you don't need. Any energetic blockages. Reach out with your left arm and give yourself a big hug and gather in. Well done. Come up nice and slowly. So we've got a, a couple of postures on the mat before we relax. You might need to put warm stuff on. Put on anything warm. And lay down. Lay down on your back. Come and take happy baby. So you might hold the back of the knees, you might hold the outer feet. Such a lovely way to ease out the hips, ease out the low back, to lengthen the low back up all that back bending. And we can do a little rock from side to side. Ananda Balasana, 
Ananda means bliss, bliss pose. Ananda Balasta, happy baby. And if you're a baby, you get your toe in your mouth, maybe. <laughs> I think yoga is all about undoing. It's about undoing all that stiffness, all that tightness we've built up over the years and coming back to where we started. <laughs> undoing all the restrictions of the body and the mind. <laughs> All those thoughts we don't need, all that stuff that we've got caught up in, you know. <laughs> and then bend your knees, take them to the floor. So what twist are you going to do? Let's press your hip feet into the mat and just shift your hips over towards the right. Good. So some of you might just take the knees to the left, and then a gentle twist. Some of you might draw your knees in and take your right knee directly over your left. And you might be able to hook or you might not into Eagle Mudra. And you can press your left foot into the mat, shift your bum over to the right a bit. And we can come down into that Eagle Twist toe if you like. But whatever twist you're in, I haven't got much room because the carpet's in the way. Press your head into the mat, lift your chest up, spread your shoulders out. Keep lengthening your tail towards your heels, creating space. If you were in the um, simple twist, you might want to put the bottom foot on top of the top thigh or knee, and that gives the um, front thigh muscle, the psoas muscle, a lovely stretch there. You choose where you want to be. You might look over the opposite shoulder or you might not. Just a couple more breaths. Breathing in slow. Breathing out slow. Breathing in deep and soft. Breathing out softly. Come to the centre. Shift your hips over to the other side, over to your left. Just come into a little twist like this if you like. Or you can take your left knee over your right. That might be enough. You can hook if you like, figure with eight or eagle. And take your knees, your left knees over to the right. And Press your head into the mat, stretch the shoulders out, and it's really quite hard to have the knee coming to the earth and the opposite shoulder, isn't it? So don't worry if you don't, you might have a little block to rest your knee on it, a little block to rest your shoulder on. But as you relax there, you can let gravity, the weight of your body, your breath ease you out. And I love this stretch, this twist of my low back, especially after all that strong backbender. So two more breaths, following the mantra of the breath. Breathing in slowly, breathing out slowly. Breathing in soft and deep. Breathing out slowly. Just come and do everything you need to do to ease out before we take Shavasana. It might be quite nice to take the knees together and 
or go from side to side in a wheelchair, anything else you need to do for yourself. And then get cosy and warm and comfy. You need to stop the video and get warm things, do cushions, blocks, bolsters. Turn the light on. Light a candle. Make yourself cosy. Take a few slow breaths. Allow yourself to sink down into the support of the mat. Letting go. Relaxing all your muscles. So this is from another poem from S.C. Lowry of Butterflies and Pebbles. Go into this week with the attitude that your peace, your health of mind and your heart mean more than getting anything else done. That your smile matters. That feeling rested matters. That holding the hand of your loved one matters. So pause lots. Function at a pace that doesn't pull you apart. Honour the things that make you feel good inside. The things that make you the things that make you feel alive. Give time to those things this week. Make time the gift it is by giving it to what really matters to you. Bring your awareness back. See the colours behind your eyes. Feel your body resting on the earth. Maybe start to take a few deeper breaths. 
little yawn, a little stretch, whatever you need. Bring yourself back into your day or your evening. And of course you're very welcome to stay there and rest for longer. Or you can come onto your side now and help yourself up to seated. Or when I sit in comfortably, breathing in prana mudra, all that energy. Take your hands to your crown, your brow, your throat, your heart. We'll finish with this little quote from Yogananda. Let my soul smile through my heart and my heart smile through my eyes so I can scatter rich smiles in sad hearts. Namaste. Om Shanti. Peace, peace, peace. Om Shanti. Thank you for watching the video. If you like the video, please put like on the YouTube and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you. You can find more videos on Jill's Yoga at www.exeteryoga.org. Thank you. Have a happy week. <laughs>